This video will demonstrate some of the errors that can arise when sampling a mixture. In the fall of 2015, I attended the EAFS conference in Prague. This demo is based on a series of activities that we did as part of that workshop. It is a very simple demonstration of the challenge in obtaining the elusive representative sample. What I really like about the demo is its incredible simplicity and how easy it is to replicate with items you probably have lying around the house. So here we are in my backyard so that I can film all of this and avoid my very enthusiastic four-footed helper. What we will do for this demo is make our own 50-50 by weight binary mixture of two types of particle and then see what happens when we sample our mixture. Our equipment includes a kitchen scale. This one has a capacity of 3 kilograms and reads to 0.1 grams precision. It costs about 20 bucks. We also have three containers, one of which has a tight-fitting lid. We need a sieve or colander with a mesh size that will easily separate our two types of particle. We have scoops of different sizes and shapes. There's a quarter here on the table for scale. Finally, we need two types of particles. In the original workshop, we used fine grain table salt and kidney beans. Today, I'm using play sand and dog kibble. If you want to play along at home, you can use any two types of particle so long as they are dry and easily separated using a sieve. The first step is to make our 50-50 mixture. I'll put my container on the scale, tear it, and then add 500 grams of kibble. I'll then re-tear the container and add 500 grams of play sand. Close the container and mix well. Due to the differences in size, shape, and density of the two particles, the mixture has stratified with the sand settling mostly near the bottom and the kibble mostly near the top. This is our first clue that sampling our mixture could be a problem. If we take sample from the bottom, we will likely have a lot more sand, and if we take sample from the top, it will likely have a lot more kibble. I'll try to mix things around a bit and take a representative sample when I scoop samples out of our mixture. Now it's time to sample the mixture. For this go-round, I will take one spoonful of the mixture using the small golden spoon. As you can see, I have sampled some sand, some kibble, and the total mixture has a weight of 12.6 grams. Since we know that this is a 50-50 mixture by weight, we are expecting to have 6.3 grams of sand and 6.3 grams of kibble in this sample if we have a truly representative sample. Let's see how we did. We put a container onto the balance, zero it, and then using the sieve, transfer only the sand into our container. Hmm. 8.2 grams. We're off by 1.9 grams, or 30%. Just to check, let's transfer the kibble to another teared container and check its weight. 4.1 grams. So the total weight is 12.3 grams. We do have 0.3 grams of material that's unaccounted for, but this error is on the order of about 2%, so much smaller than the bias introduced by our sampling scoop. The small error is easily explained by me being outside and there being an occasional breeze. It could also be explained by me having a cheap $20 balance. From sampling theory, we know that sampling error should decrease if we take a larger sample. Strictly speaking, if we sample a larger number of particles, the error should go down. So what happens if we repeat the experiment but take more scoops of sample? In this sample we have 55 grams of our mixture, so we would expect 27.5 grams of sand and 27.5 grams of kibble. What do we see? In this case 39.7 grams of sand and 14.5 grams of kibble. We're still missing about 0.8 grams, which could be due to drafts. 
it could also be due to static, as I have noticed my sand clinging a bit to the sides of the plastic containers. Or it could also just be my cheap balance. In any event, our errors are now about 12 grams, or 44%, on sand. Still a massive error. Clearly there's a problem with our little gold scoop. What if we try a bigger scoop, with a slightly different shape? We were clearly unable to keep the right amount of kibble on the small scoop, so let's try the wooden spoon. We repeat the exercise using the wooden spoon. Our total sample has a weight of 100 grams, so we expect 50 grams of each type of particle. How do we do this time? Seventy grams of kibble and thirty grams of sand. Now we have an error that's just as big, but in the other direction. Now we're biasing against sand instead of biasing against kibble like we were before. Why is this happening? Well, let us look at the particles. They have very different sizes, shapes, and densities. Consequently, the sand settles to the bottom, filling in gaps between the larger pieces of kibble. Also, the scoop size and shape matters, as does how you fill it. With the small spoon, it could hold a relatively large amount of sand on the bottom of it, but only a few pieces of kibble before they just started rolling off and not being collected with our scoop. This biased the small spoon against the kibble. The larger, shallow wooden spoon, on the other hand, could hold some sand but provided a platform upon which the kibble could stack, effectively biasing towards kibble being sampled. So what's our take-home message in all of this? Well, taking a truly representative sample, especially with solids and heterogeneous mixtures of particles, is clearly not quite so simple as just scooping up a sample and running off to the lab. Your whole analytical protocol needs to be evaluated and validated right back to taking the sample. If you are getting irreproducible results when you're analyzing real samples, the culprit could be your sampling protocol. The rest of your method could be perfectly fine and wonderful. If you want to explore this further on your own at home, you probably have everything you need in your kitchen already. If you don't have a kitchen scale, you can get a pretty good inexpensive digital scale pretty easily nowadays. Just make sure you have a scale that has a capacity of over one kilo. Things that you can do at home to explore this topic further include testing out the reproducibility of a given sampling scoop for single sized samples or for multiple samples that are bulked together. Sort of like when I took one scoop with the golden spoon versus multiple scoops with the golden spoon. You can evaluate this reproducibility both in terms of the observed percentage of particle A versus particle B and in terms of the total mass sampled in each scooping. With your data from this experiment, you can work out how many scoops or multiple scoopings you would need to measure individually to get the precision in your estimation of the particle A versus particle B ratio below 5% or below 1% or below 0.1% RSD. Note, with this experiment we are not actually worried about the accuracy of this ratio and whether we are truly getting a 50-50 ratio. Here we're just looking at the precision. Then what you can do is compare different types of scoops, different sizes, profiles of the scoop, is its bowl shallow or deep, different shapes of scoop, etc, etc, Compare that with the first scoop, basically repeating the tests from step one with different scoops and see how it works out that way in terms of both precision and accuracy of the sampling method. A third thing you can try to do is see what happens when you make different mixtures of particles, say using sugar or salt or cornmeal as particle A and using lentils, dry peas, rice, or beans as particle B. The only thing you need to worry about is whether you can separate these two particles with your sieve. I hope you've enjoyed this demo.